the most common of the 200 or so types of dwarfism, produces people who stand barely four feet above the ground, fully grown. Let's go look through. A far rarer condition creates the smallest people on Earth who rise just three feet in the air, making other dwarfs look like giants. I feel like I want to powder your nose. <laughs> and a new, unexplained form of dwarfism has been discovered in just one person on the planet. <laughs> just your nose, didn't it? Inside and out, they are truly extraordinary humans. Hey, have a good day. Hey, come on in. Hi, Mama. I told you Momo was here. The Campbell family, who live in Maryland, is like any other American family except that they operate on a lower altitude than most. Where do you want to put your coat? Do you Go show Mama where you put your coat. Mm -hmm. Susie Campbell is 46 years old. I'm a stay-at-home mom, domestic engineer. But at 3 foot 10 inches, she's the size of a typical 6-year-old. She stands a foot and a half shorter than the average adult female. Even so, Susie has fully adapted to life on a different scale. Are you ready for some snack? I care about my hair color, that kind of stuff. But being a dwarf, I've never had an issue with it. Never. Susie, like some 70% of dwarfs, has the type called achondroplasia. People with this condition are called achons. They are born average size, but their skeletons take on their distinctive shapes as they grow older. Curiously, they're not smaller in every way. For example, Susie's head is actually bigger than average, and her torso is the same as a normal-sized person but it's in their half-sized thigh and upper arm bones where dwarfs part ways with average people. The way in which acons like Susie walk is due to another unusual skeletal feature. Their knees tend to bend outward, and the more extreme the bend, the more pressure is applied to the joints. The legs bow because an acon's outer shank bone, the fibula, grows longer than the inner bone, the tibia. This causes the legs to bend outward. Compared to average-sized adults, their unique leg design forces acons to walk in a distinctive way. They walk with a waddle, taking short steps and swaying from side to side. The movement requires more energy per step than for an average-sized person. Walking or standing, Susie's height gives her a unique sense of scale. When I am sitting in a chair and an average-sized person is sitting next to me, we're almost the same height. The time of difference is when we stand up. Susie's achondroplasia is caused by a genetic mutation in a gene that comes from her father. Her parents are both average sized, as are her siblings. And this is true of some 80% of acons. I'm the only one with dwarfism in my family. Both my brothers are over six feet. The mutated gene responsible for causing achondroplasia is located on the end of one of the 46 human chromosomes. Take that to Momo, please. Chromosomes are long chains of DNA that look like twisted ladders. A gene is a section of that ladder. Genes carry code for building the human body. They are blueprints for how the body grows. Everything from the internal organs to a person's physical appearance. The ladder's cross pieces are chemicals that make up those instructions. In achondroplasia, one of these cross pieces happens to be the wrong chemical. This mutation most dramatically affects the growth of bone, particularly those in the arms and legs. This genetic glitch interrupts the usual process that makes them grow. 